Um, cool. So we've talked about the Ness for a very long time. Yeah, he yeah. was super clever and used some really great tricks. And now let's move on to the Ness. Do this. <laughs> okay. Let's listen to some music we from, from Final Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> So this is Final Fantasy, and we are in a very different music world. Yeah, if you like started playing this game, you're probably like, oh, yeah, it's the same, but with heart. Just start yeah, playing, you I, I miss really all the play new, this new game. Yeah. miss all the new yeah. shit. Yeah, so, so the, 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 the cool feature here is um, we suddenly have a string orchestra, and, and we have reeds, and we have a wonderful sound. Um, that, that, that like joins the prelude, right? This prelude that started as two voices working together to create one voice that had an echo, um, now is accompanied by this gorgeous, gorgeous orchestration, right? Um, and again, like, like like Lily was saying, um, if you skipped it, like if you just went straight through the menu, you would miss it, which is so cool because you know at, at some point there, there's got to be a whole crew of people who like didn't know that this was there, and then like one day like they're like, oh, I'm gonna like play Final Fantasy IV, and then like went to the bathroom or something, yeah. and they come back and they're like, wait, there's all this orchestra. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they would, of course. But like, it's the idea that like, like, what if you heard it there first? But it was in the beginning, you know, which is, I, I just love that. Like, it's not an Easter egg, but like, it's, a, it's just a little nugget of something. Uh, and it shows mm -hmm. off that you're not in Nestland anymore. I was going to say it's heralding kind of a new era. In yeah, because the, the harp sound is really similar, but the orchestra is not. It's and it's, it's showing off the capabilities of this, uh, of this, new, um, yeah. th this new idea, this new uh, hardware. Yeah, so let me, let me talk about the hardware really quick. And I'm going to cut this down, because we're definitely going to run out of time. Um, so <laughs> the SNES, their sound solution was this thing, the SSMP, and look at that Sony under there. What's going on there? Oh, so sure. yeah, there's some, there's some delicious drama about that. We'll talk about that in a sec. Um, but it was designed by this guy. That's Mr. not a Super Nintendo. Um, that is not a Super Nintendo. No. This is a later photo. OK, so we just talked about the NES, and now we know all sorts of things about this cool, digitally controlled synthesizer that was in the NES. Throw all that out the window. We hate it. It sucks. Now the Super Nintendo <laughs> is here, and it's completely different. Um, and basically what it is is it's just a traditional wavetable synthesizer. Uh, it, it, play back, it plays back samples. Still pretty limited. The samples can't be big, any bigger than 2K, only 64K of, of, of RAM available to the chip. But you actually get some RAM on the audio solution. Amazing. Um, so whereas the, the NES had a very kind of weird implementation and the voices were each sort of unique and limited. Uh, the SNES is much more practical. You get eight voices that can play back these two kilobit samples um, and you can reload new samples uh, as you see fit, although in the beginning of development, I think they actually had to hack around to figure that out. Um, but you can, you know, so you can change the sound of your game mid-game. You can sort of have your own eight voices of orchestra and sound effects for UI and stuff like that. And when you get to like a second chapter in a longer game, you can go, all right, let's just throw that out. Let's get some new samples in there and have some new instruments. Yeah, or so even just like, I'm going to the inn to, yeah. you know, like rest. And then I've rested and a new sound table has opened up and that's the rest sound. And now I'm back in the inn and that's its own music. And now I'm back in the town and that's its own music. That yeah. has a completely different uh, instrumentation. Whereas the NES was like, I have the same instrument, and I play it no matter where you are. It just sounds different. Yeah, so, so as far as the evolution of the digital orchestra is concerned, this is like a huge for composers. And it, and it, and it, it would be very familiar to them having worked with wavetable synthesizers in like a recording studio or performing environment. Mm -hmm. Same basically a basic idea. Um, and it should, it should be noted, though, that, that I think when you first like hear about it, you're like, oh, that's cool. They could sample all these acoustic instruments and have these amazing realistic sounding orchestra sounds. Mm -hmm. And no, um, because of the very limited bit, bit rate, it turned out, I mean, I, from, from, from what I've heard, uh, it turned out that synthesized sources and sampling synthesized sources actually sounded better. So even mm -hmm. though the SNES is playing back a sample, and it could play back a sample of like a bongo. You actually hear that in Super Mario Bros. 3 on the NES, that bongo sound. Oh, uh, sample. Yeah. And then, uh, then or, uh, Super, uh, Super Mario World, when you get on Yoshi, it adds bongos to yeah, the background. Yeah, there's bongos right? there. Those yeah. are an acoustic sample. Anytime you hear a timpani in, um, in Super Mario World, that's a real acoustic sample, although it's been very, very altered. But a lot of the instruments were actually sampled by mm -hmm. DX7 or DX9 FM synthesizers. 
So it's kind of interesting. You know, you have the sampler to sample acoustic sounds, and you go, great, let's, you know, we just threw out the synthesizer from the Nest, and now we have a sampler in the SNES. Let's sample some synthesizers. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, but I think they made the right choice because it ultimately sounded better within the limitations of what a console could do. Yeah, and speaking of, uh, of the voices and what they ended up sounding like, especially uh, having sort of a synthy sound, uh, what we're going to play right now is the, uh, we're going to play uh, the preludes for all of the SNES games, and we're going to, um, uh, we're going to load up the uh, prelude for Final Fantasy IV first, and we're going to also layer in each voice one, one at a time. Yeah. So you can really hear this, like, difference in all the sounds. Cool. Let's do that. So there's our first part voice. There's a second part voice. That little bouncy, off thing. Basses. Yeah, a little cello action. Viola, and some of you can recognize that that's not like a recording of a violin. That, that's a synthy violin, violin. synthy cello, right? And it's not great. And in context, you get that. That's yeah, it's, it's a yummy sound, and clearly a lot more than what you could do on the. Oh, yeah. um, do we want to listen to some Final Fantasy V? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's, uh, we're going to load up the uh, um, Final Fantasy V prelude just for a second so we can hear a little bit of that. Oh, did I get a woo-woo? <laughs> cool. You really hear that screaming sound. And actually, the, the second harp voice does turn into a violin here on the fly. Here's some Final Fantasy VI. I know, it just keeps getting slower and slower through the series. Can you tell this is late in development? Because that little wind cue, that ta-da, that sounded really good. Yeah. Like, compared to Final Fantasy IV, where the, the lead wind line was kind of like, oh, well, okay. Um, like all of a sudden things are really starting to sound like, oh, it's starting to sound a little I closer to real music. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and if, if you're noticing what we're going for is, uh, is this idea that in the NES it was like, well, we have a sort of family of instruments that we're kind of reminding you of. In this NES, especially in the early days, we're like, cool, we have like a smaller family. Like we went from woodwind to like reed. And now we're like, oh, it's definitely like a double read in the lower octave, probably English horn, maybe even like, you know, sort of a recorder kind of thing, like a, like a Baroque-ish type of um, uh, double read. It's just super interesting that we can start to recognize the actual instrumentation as opposed to just being sort of hearkened to a family of instruments. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say that's like a huge milestone just in video game music in general is when you get to the point and, and, and it's not like a, a hard point, but just like where the uh, a lay person who's just familiar with this kind of repertoire, if you like film scores, or maybe they played in band in high school, can listen to a video game and say, that's a clarinet. I know, I recognize that reference. You know, like, yeah. like that, you know, that is like a, <laughs> that is a really great moment for composers, you know, because we've, we've sort of like crossed the threshold of like, okay, now your average person can recognize your music as music. It's not video game music anymore. It's starting to actually just be music. Uh, right. And uh, so, uh, as we said with the NES, we, we talked about the prelude, uh, and then we talked about the battle music. When we talked about the battle music, we were noticing that there were um, some drums later on. We heard a lot of bass, right? They kind of sounded like an electric bass. Um, when we get into Final Fantasy IV land, yeah. we can really pluck out these instruments. We can really identify them. Yeah, here we go. It's so obviously like a song of bass player, like this is the best. Um, uh, yeah, the the battle music it, yeah, gets me so jazzed. Um, um, so we hear this brass melody, right? And we can really kind of identify it as brass. Um, we have like a synthy string accompaniment, right? Remember the prelude, except now it's really like up and coming and it's really fun. 
Um, and if you notice, we have a full drum set. Um, and uh, we get more of the same in Final Fantasy V. Yeah, and now we're really getting into subjective arguments, right? Like, what sounds better to you? What is more your style? Because it's not just like, oh, it's the mess, and like, it, it's like, these are instruments that you actually have a relationship to, and, and the music has this whole kind of like narrative to it. Um, so we heard the same things, super awesome, like disco, we like bass, we heard those brass, uh, maybe kind of saxophone, woodwinds, like very in-your-face kind of instruments. Uh, uh, I know, I know, we're getting to the opera in just a second. Um, so um, the last thing before that is the Final Fantasy VI battle music, where we can really hear the evolution of all of these sounds that we've been talking about. Yes, it answered the question, Final Fantasy, does it gent? Yes, it does. Electric guitar sample in there. So we hear that brass melody, we hear that I love it. It's so awesome, right? It's totally like the it's like the most kick-ass battle music ever. And like it really sets up like the rest of Final Fantasy forever, right? As being this like marriage of a rock band and orchestra and having that be this really epic and amazing sound. And speaking of really epic and amazing sounds. <laughs> okay, so the opera. We all know it. Talk about it. Yeah. It's amazing. Talk about it. We all love it. So this was like something that had just totally never been done before. And the development team actually thought of it. And then the director, Yoshinori Kitate, he wrote the lyrics and then they just went to Uematsu and we're like, we're doing an opera in this game. And he's just like, all right. So he's, <laughs> he's a chill guy, I think. So he's like, like, I guess I'm right now. But he's like, it wasn't that in his idea, but... Which game was this? Six. Final Fantasy VI, yes. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, there is an entire opera scene, um, and it's a really, really interesting piece of, uh, of not only video game history, but uh, video game music history, uh, which I, I, I really recommend that you, you play six. It's such a good game. I was going to say, so it's pretty much in four big chunks. Mm -hmm. So we've got, like, opening with the overture. It's actually followed by some great lobby music that's, like, ragtime Mozart. Yeah. There is. Oh, so it, it, it's, it's, it starts okay. with uh, so this guy. Discrete. This is my favorite guy. He, <laughs> he is conducting so hard right now. That's <laughs> like not inspired at all. No, great. but he's committed. Oh, yeah. He's like co committed. The biggest, to I, I love the bass players. It's like the biggest <laughs> opera orchestra of all time. Yeah, and, and here, here's our, our cast uh, of characters, or our, well, our crew of characters. It's um, just a really like classic early opera sound where you've got like Fonzetti, Mozart, and then so we've got a little like narration over hard fire from the impresario. Yeah. So and can it can I just interject here that this yeah. is like a great like diegetic kind of music moment that because the characters that you're playing are listening to this music. They are in the audience. They actually sit down, and then it's like, okay, now your party is watching an opera. Yeah. Listen to um, it. In case you're wondering, uh, uh, he used the word diegetic. Uh, that means sound that the characters in the story can hear, right? Um, like in this opera, like Locke and, and Tara, they can hear this music, um, as opposed to the battle music, which is something that we hear, which is non diegetic music. And the opera is such a good example of diegetic versus non diegetic music. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. All right. Oh, wait, so that's the opening, right? Yeah, I was going to say. So now our hero Draco enters, and this like, really amazing noise happens. It's the best. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> But also, like, this is this is a cool brain moment. Also, like when you're filling in the blanks, if you read the words while he's singing, you can convince yourself that he's actually kind of singing that, well, even though he's clearly not. Well, so much like early video game music, especially in Final Fantasy, is like the, the player meets the music halfway because yes. you really want to hear it as a voice. So mm -hmm. you do. You know, they did as much as they could, and it's up to the player to fill in the gap, which um, is great, and we love it. Um, uh, have, have, is this anyone familiar with the name uh, Ted Woolsey? Right? Yes, yes. Uh, what, what, was, what was he famous for? Can anyone tell me? Translation, Translation. yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so so he, he, he was like like the dude 
for uh, translating um, Japanese games into English for uh, North American audiences. Um, and uh, there, there's a little bit of like a kind of controversy with Six because some of his translations sort of change the characters, and there are like two, huh? Yeah, ex yeah. yep. Um, and uh, and they're like, which version is the right version? That's like an argument that happens. But um, he, uh, when it was given opera, spent so much time on it because he was like, I want it to match up. Like, I want to hear the sounds, like the, the singing, and I want to match up the, the translated words. And so he like was really careful about what words he chose and how he phrased everything so that it would that you, you would get this feeling that, that the character was actually singing the, the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And he did a great job because, I mean, you can see some traditional opera opera that's translated, and most of it sucks. Like the stuff that they're like, hey, we'll, we'll yeah, we're gonna take this Italian opera we know, we and we're gonna put it in English yeah. for all of the plebs, and, and it's, you know, you listen to it and you're just like, this is legitimately awful. Um, so, I mean, it's just a huge challenge. So it's thank you, Ted Wilson, challenge. for making opera not awful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, 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 let, let's move on to the, um, the next piece, the next part of the opera, the oh, yes. Aria de Mezzo Caratere. Uh, otherwise known as the aria of the medium character. I love it. So, like, it's still the same sound, but before it was kind of lowered into the pitch of a tenor voice range, and then he puts a little higher into the mezzo soprano range. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great. I'm going to talk about when it comes back later. Okay. Um, so, uh, 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 we, we call this an aria, right? Uh, because we're not really giving you a ton of plot. We're actually um, giving a really pretty melody, and we're sort of keeping the lyrics abstract. And we're talking about feelings uh, rather than being like, "Hey, this is going to happen to this character, and I am going to do this." It's more just like she's singing this about is what I'm feeling. her feelings, and the melody is just ugh, gorgeous. And speaking of the melody, yeah. so this music comes back later. This is going to be a spoiler. Sorry, everyone. Spoilers for Final Fantasy VI. So like, yes, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to so, ruin the game. Our heroine, having her diva moment later on in the game, she pretty much hits rock bottom and she decides that she's going to kill herself rather than live alone in like a totally shitty world. Um, and so while she's getting ready to jump off this cliff, we hear this melody non-diagetically. So it's just us listening to it and it's like this little bell. So it's kind of like, I mean, Final Fantasy is like no stranger to light motif, which is a really common opera thing where you have a specific melody that's associated with a character or place. They use it all over the place, but I think this one is particularly like right in the feels. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's really, it's really sad. Mm -hmm. um, so moving right along, because we, there, there are a couple things I really want to get to. Um, after the uh, aria de mezzo caratare, um, my French is terrible. Uh, we move on to the wedding waltz, where we see these dancing sprites, um, and it's super neat. Um, oh, and right here we had a special thing that happened, where our main character went off screen, after the music died down, um, the screen turns black, the music comes up before the screen came back, and that's the audio dumping its RAM and refilling it for all of the new sounds while the video then clips out and dumps itself to get loaded for this. It's just like, super well done uh, in this so because her, she like walks down stage in silence and it seems very like sad. Uh, th this is really um, important. So um, we see this character. Um, this is still by a joke music. He's hearing this. But because he's not on stage, he's in the back room, the music got quieter. Yeah, so they like faded it down. Oh, yeah, yes. which oh. is which is great. It's so good because what it is is it's all these little it's all these little um, sort of design elements that are helping helping to sell the idea that your character is hearing this and that you're experiencing this music directly through the character, <laughs> which is really cool. Back in the opera house. Now we're back. It got louder. Yeah. Oh. It's it's the little it's, things. It's storytelling through like the the design of, of like like the sound design of music, right? It, it, I love it. I love musical storytelling. Uh, and then we get this wonderful trio, the love triangle. Oh, it's great. Um, so the final oh, section angle. of the opera is the grand finale. Um, and uh, I think, I think Lily, I think you should tell us about it. Okay. <laughs> so we have this final battle with our, I mean, I hate when this happens when I'm performing when like a giant octopus shows up to ruin your opera. But the, <laughs> uh, the finale music has a lot of like timpani, cymbals, and percussion. And it's kind of like, like a circusy Turkish march, which mm -hmm. is like pretty common in opera too. And then this section is broken up into three tinier sections. Yeah. 
The first one kind of features the strings playing offbeat. The second theme has brass, it's sort of punchy. Mm -hmm. And then the third brings those both together and they kind of play off each other. So it yeah. sort of becomes this whole duet. Yeah. Let's, let's listen to that first theme. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's a brass melody. It's string on me. How many symphony players we got in the house? Ooh. Here's that, the was, that was my timpani performance. That was like really good. Um, so but, here's uh, the second theme. So we had brass melody and string offbeats reversed. String melody and brass offbeats. And then, um, and it's very short. But then we get to the third theme, which is where the brass and the strings work together to tell the story. Yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah, and it, it, it's a giant battle. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, so they get their airship. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to beat that.